Hi, my name is Alan Roy, and I'm a director of engineering here at VMware, where I work on the VMware Kubernetes Engine, or VKE. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, how we lay out our Kubernetes clusters, or the Kubernetes cluster topology. So there are a couple important things to know about how we construct our, our clusters and what they look like. First of all, it's important to know that we create all of your clusters in what we call a shadow AWS account. The idea here is that uh, we are running your clusters in an account that is managed by us. It's not in your account. You probably have an account too in AWS. So I'll draw your account over here, and we'll come back to it later. But it's important to know that our clusters are, drawn, are, are created entirely within uh, an AWS shadow account. So I'll show you how we create a single cluster, and we're going to put it in one region. A cluster is always in a single region. So I'll assume that this cluster is in a region, uh, we'll put it in the US West 2 region. Great. So every time we create a cluster, there's two different types of clusters we could create. The first one is called a production cluster, and the second one is called a development cluster. Uh, today I'm going to focus on production clusters. Uh, they are more scalable, uh, more robust, and uh, more likely to be used for production workloads. So every time we create a production cluster, we are actually within this shadow AWS account that is managed by VKE, we are going to create an AWS VPC. And for those of you who are not familiar with the VPC, this is a single private network within AWS. So if we don't go to any special effort, all of the virtual machines that we create within this VPC are going to be on private networks. Uh, and only uh, available within the VPC. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We are going to create uh, the network, the, uh, sorry, the Kubernetes cluster in three availability zones for maximum availability. So I'm going to assume we have three zones. I'm going to abbreviate it AZ and then zone A. We'll make another zone, availability zone B, and a third zone, availability zone C. Great. So within these zones, I'm going to go ahead and create the cluster that we've got. Um, and I mentioned that we're going to make sure that the cluster is only available to you, um, sorry, that the, the virtual machines are available only on private networks. So of course the question is begged, how do you get access to the cluster? So I'm going to put a load balancer here in front of the cluster. And this load balancer will span the three availability zones. And it will provide access to all of the uh, necessary uh, machines within the cluster. Now behind this load balancer, we're going to make three Kubernetes masters. So I'm going to make master one in, in availability zone A, master two here, in availability zone B, and finally master three over here. So these masters, it's important to note, these are running on private networks. They are not directly accessible for security reasons. They are only accessible via this load balancer, which will expose only the necessary networking ports that we have. Uh, then when workers are created, the workers will also be created within the same availability zones. So I can have a worker here, worker here. And of course, I might have many workers. I'm just going to draw three workers for today. But the, the cluster can scale quite far, and you might have many workers distributed across all three of your zones. And again, these workers are going to be on a private network, again, for security purposes. Um, OK, so a couple important points. One of the questions that people always ask is, well, if you're managing this, um, how do I get access to my services that are running in Amazon? Perhaps you're running your own services in your own uh, AWS account. Or perhaps you have access to uh, other AWS services um, like RDS or, or, or other services that are available through your AWS account. So we allow you to set up what's called a VPC peer to your account. So this will allow you to uh, share network traffic from your Kubernetes cluster that's in the shadow AWS account that is owned by AWS. And 
share that traffic with, within your AWS account. So if you have your, um, I don't know, perhaps you're running RDS, or perhaps you're running your own service, uh, it doesn't really matter. Either way, your cluster is able to access these services through the VPC peer. A uh, couple last important points about security. Uh, you'll recall that, of course, all of these are on private networks for purposes of security. We are also securing everything um, through, of course, HTTPS. So when there's a user who wants to access their Kubernetes cluster, we are going to secure it with HTTPS. And uh, users are going to authenticate using something called Open ID. Uh, uh, connect or OIDC. So when users authenticate, they are going to be authenticated and authorized using their, uh, their identity that comes from their My VMware account. They're going to access that, uh, uh, your cl the cluster using OpenID Connect, which gives you a token to access this cluster. This is all hidden behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about all the details. The point is that we are securely authenticating and authorizing the users who are external to the cluster. Um, and maybe one last comment on the cluster is that within a cluster, we are running a few extra agents uh, on the Kubernetes cluster. And these are providing the, a little bit of extra functionality in order to support our, uh, our VKE smart clusters, which allow auto scaling and automatic recovery of failed nodes. And that's what the topology of our Kubernetes clusters looks like. Thank you. You can learn more at our website, cloud.vmware.com.